macam Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. Yes, everyone. What is it that we do every Sunday? We're trying to take over the world. Nothing has changed. And I just want to say thank you for being a part of this little concoction, this movement. So for the last four weeks, we were speaking about media and just looking at that as one of the mountains that we, you know, we identified out of, even though we said seven, once again, there can be a whole leap of mountains, holy, holy, holy. But we just pulled on media and it took us four weeks and I still don't believe that we have even dissected media, just the full gamut of media, but we did our very best. Um, we looked at it from different platforms, from angles, sorry, different angles to say, um, visual and music as well as the different forms of communication and so i really sought the lord and was asking you know what's the next mountain that we should take on and the holy spirit just simply said to me put things into perspective and so on this journey that we started it's almost March, April, maybe what, April, May, June, July, August, September, almost six months in. There's a lot of stuff that we need to bring together. And I didn't ask for a speaker for tonight or a guest presenter because I think it's time for us to start to speak. Um, I'm going to ask my husband who is here with me every week and is the executive producer <laughs> of Let's Talk. Guys, you see my background? You see my background? Cleve, talk to me. Cleve, you can't talk to me now. Look at it. Woo! We have up the real deal. Banner and all. Cleve, talk now. Talk to me, Cleve. I don't see Jace here. Turn up, trust me. Looking oh good. <laughs> Nikki, look at my background. Very nice. Talk to me. <laughs> and this is because of this journey. Nicola, where you there? How many here, Nicola? I said nothing. Come on now. I've been on a journey with you guys and persons like Nicola and Jason. A lot of persons are saying, you know, boy, Natalie, you can't be doing this thing and you don't look decent. And many things have been happening behind the scene. And so tonight, I want us to talk. I've written, you know, the fact that Natalie said, all right. Um, it's serious. I, I don't write. So it's serious. When I tell you, say pen, touch, paper. And I have just written what I will later share at the end. The Lord has spoken to me about. And also, there are some points I want us to go through. And I'm going to lay the points. And I hope that we will have a great evening tonight. And that we will speak on this point. And we can put things into perspective. In, perspective in order in order to move us forward thank you nicola and dave so chris can you just start us off with some prayer because the lord is taking us somewhere tonight 
everyone. All right. Father, thank you, God, for <clears throat> this afternoon. God, thank you for um, this Kairos moment, mighty God. Father, we are here because of you. And God, I declare, God, that you will open our minds, God, even now. Father, we know that the heavens is already open. And so God, we declare that our minds will be open to receive what heaven wants to download, mighty God. And so God, we declare for capacity tonight. We declare that God, our capacity will increase, mighty God. So that we'll not, we'll not just maybe get a revelation and just be satisfied. But God, I declare that we shall receive the outpouring, mighty God, that heaven is offering, mighty God. Father, shift us to a new place, mighty God. Oh, God Almighty, thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit of living God, that we will never be the same, God, even after this evening, mighty God. Individually, God, collectively, God, even as a church, even as the body of Christ, that God Almighty, we will move forward, God, into the things of God. So, Lord God, we just open up, God, our hearing even now to a different level. Cause us, God, even to be more sensitive to the things of your spirit, mighty God. And even what is not spoken, God, mighty God, I declare, God, that you will reveal it by your spirit or hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, importantly, no one will be left behind, mighty God. But I declare that you will speak at everyone's level so that we can all understand and move together to advance your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much, sweetheart. So again, for those who have just joined, um, I just want to say welcome. Thank you for being on Let's Talk. And today we're talking. So please, unmute your mics if you have to. Can I all open your screen? You know? I know me alone, I talk tonight. But at the end of tonight's program i just want to share what the lord has placed on my heart and for those of you who are on facebook i want to say welcome thank you for joining me uh if you have any questions i will see it um so if you're on facebook or you're in the chat that's fine Let's do this together. So I would have started out when the we just started to have our pandemic and lockdown. Um, Let's talk was geared towards just opening your eyes and letting you understand the different opportunities that basically that was out there for everybody that persons may not be aware of. Um, we spoke a little bit on economy, the economy. We spoke on writing books, just tapping into the, di the different areas um, in one's life as a kingdom ambassador, as a son of the Most High, and just doing, just doing, just stop talking, stop becoming fat with the word, and just doing. And so... Persons have started, whether it be a business, whether it be an idea, they're, they're trying to fill in the blanks about, um, but things have started for persons. And the first point I want to speak on is consistency. No, not because you have this great idea or the fact that you kind of dust off a dream or an idea and start to work on it. I'm saying to you tonight that if you are not consistent with this idea, you won't see it materialize. And so many of us would have started. And for me, I can, I can say I, 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 I am in business because my husband and I would have business outside of our nine to five. Um, Let's talk. It's not a business. It's an idea. And an idea that the Lord gave to me. And I see a lot of business popping up on Let's Talk Now. Persons are really stepping out into what they believe they have the ability to do and, to, and, and with the end game being to advancing God's kingdom, making some impact in the world in a godly way consistency 
is key. You have to stick to it. You are not going to see the real beauty of that idea or that business concept if at the first heartache you walk away. If at the first negative criticism you walk away. You have to remain consistent. Another point I want to speak at and at any time, guys, if you have anything to add, anything to share, now is the time to do so. Life is happening, meanwhile you're executing. Let me say that again. Life is happening, meanwhile you're executing. So if it is the business idea or the business itself or just an idea, Life is not going to stop to accommodate what you have just become excited about. Life is not going to stop to accommodate a mandate that you may have had or you just discover. Life happens. What's life? Somebody in your family might die. You may get sick. Oh, yeah, We're in a pandemic. Life is happening. So because life is happening, doesn't mean that you stop what you're doing. So we go back to point one. You have to remain consistent. Why am I having this conversation? No, it's because I don't want at the end of each Sunday, you leave so empowered that you get caught up in a cloud and realize so many things, start to do so many things. And then when reality starts to hit, you feel as though you're alone. Oh, God, stay so. Why me can't just have a break and get my breakthrough? Why me can't just get my bus and just, you know, run off? Why am I going through stuff? Meanwhile, all of this good stuff is happening. Another stuff, set of stuff that you, you deem bad, but it's not bad. It's just life. You are thinking that that has something to do with what you've been called to do and how to get it done. And so, Chris, do you have something that you want to add? I just want to share um, the scripture. Sure, go ahead. As you, as you mentioned. Um, you're seeing my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, this is Luke 8, New Living Translation. Um, and it reads, one day Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. And he says, a farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it, as he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Other seed fell on rocks. It began to grow. But the plant soon wilt and, and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still other seed fell on fertile soil. These seeds grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as been planted. When he had said this, he, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him about what this parable meant. He says, again, <laughs> You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parable to teach others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. The seed that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptations. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly 
the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. And the seed that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce huge harvests. So it really speaks of the different, um, in essence, people who are listening and where their heart is, Natalie. Right? And so those who, your people who, as you said, when you talk about change, people would be excited about change. But really and truly, only, only few people really manifest this change. Right? And again, too, the devil is also involved because the Bible says here that when we hear the word and we don't understand, the enemy know that we don't understand, he quickly snatches it away. Right? So if we really have to be conscious of what we are hearing, and it's important for us to put it in action because that's part of the, the whole learning process. You really have never learned until you put whatever you're hearing in practice. So I just wanted to add that to your, the conversation. You are breaking up there. You are breaking up. Not sure. Are you hearing me now? I need to tell him that his you are you are breaking yeah I'm hearing you know okay better sure sure okay so no um you heard well you heard the scripture right, right. you heard me okay yeah so we I was just heard talking clearly, about we heard clearly clearly though not we were hearing oh you were hearing okay so it's maybe my connection okay thanks yeah. thanks. Thanks, Nikisha. So, um, the next point is dealing with other failures while executing and establishing. So, in our little bubble, sometimes we think that when we are executing and doing stuff, that we must stay in that bubble. You will have failures, like real outright failures, and it has nothing to do with what you're involved in it has to do with personal stuff because some of us are executing this idea mean meanwhile we are at work meanwhile we're living and so in your living you may come upon stuff that you yourself you're struggling with and you see it as issues that you have and and and, and stuff that you look at as failures stuff happening around you real life stuff happening around you and you're trying to execute this idea that you know that God has given you, this, this, this nugget that you know that you have. And so I'm saying that you have to understand that not because life is happening that you cannot execute. No, this is not for babes. This is not baby talk. Because for, for, for baby, we want the, the perfect environment to, to, to do everything and be left alone and to be free and everything around us is happening all good at the same time. We, we, if we don't have that level of synergy, we feel as though something wrong, some elements is off between us and God and what God wants us to do. And that's not true. So in this journey that we are on, where things are, are happening, you're going to have to be dealing with other failures in the process of executing. I'm not sure if someone is trying to speak. Okay. And um, so let's just share, let's talk. Let's talk has been around for six months. And I have a job that's very demanding. And, I'm, and my job takes a toll on me so much sometimes that I don't want to do. Let's talk. But I have to put that aside. Put thanks be to God that I have good people to support me and I have a wonderful husband who I can offload on. But I've had to learn to compartmentalize in an healthy way, not an unhealthy way, where I know I have something to execute and I know there's something that I need to do because this is an, I, I know that this is a God idea. 
and in the midst of everything else happening around me and in the midst of everything else kind of trying to define who I am and I am seeing certain failures within my, my own self, I still have to execute. I still have to put aside the weeks that I don't want to come on the platform and still execute. I do not get up feeling happy every day. This smile is not a smile of putting on. It is a smile that I know that I'm on a journey and there are persons here who are on this journey. Numbers don't mean a thing to me because when Let's Talk started, anyone who was close to me know that I just wanted 20 people because I can't be with crowd. So I have learned, and, and I have learned it through the word, through the story of Gideon. I have learned it through just watching life on a whole, that when it comes on to change, it sounds good. But when you actually say, who ready for do it? The numbers dwindle. So people get excited about the idea of change. People get excited about who they are as a son. People get excited about the abilities and, and all of these things that you have, the ability to heal, the ability to, to speak things into being. When people hear these stuff about themselves, they get excited. But when it comes on to the actual walking, the numbers dwindle because then there becomes a little finger happens and then what happens is that life start to happen in your excitement and then when life start to happen then you start to have the falling away so for those of you who are online and you are serious just as your christian journey just as your kingdom journey you had to stick it out when you fall boof by your face how much time you had to stick it out it's the same way you have to stick it out with this idea that will maybe manifest into a business that God has given you. Another point, how can you have an idea or a business and have not done your research? That's like a man owning a shop and you go to the shop and the shop don't have flour and the shop don't have sugar and the shop don't have rice and what a shop there for. Just one normal corner store, you know. That's what people go to the corner store for. That when you run out of stuff, you're not going to go buy a chew juice, orange juice. You're not going to go buy Parmesan cheese. You're not going to go buy steak. You're going to go buy your necessity that you cannot get right now. But when you don't put in the research, when you don't put in the work and expect the thing to just operate and to flourish, you are misleading yourself. Longevity is another point. Cannot be achieved alone. The longevity of a thing cannot be achieved alone. Think back about your relationship with God. You never achieve it alone. Nothing in life can be achieved alone. I know we have this philosophy and I used to embrace it too with the Joseph story. When we used to, you know, we hear pieces preach, Joseph shouldn't talk him dream. Have Joseph never talk him dream when they end up in the pit. And so a lot of us have been, how would I put it now? Not talking our dreams not sharing foolishness you cannot get to certain places without help we do not have all the answers i could not be streaming live on facebook without shalom innovations i could not get a banner without shara I could not understand Boxlight without Jace. 
Let's talk. Couldn't happen if I never have two friends for call with the idea that God has had given me and a husband because fear did I eat me and I lit me down. This idea that somebody can take something that God has given you and, and just kill it. You are the one who give them that power to kill it. They can't kill it unless you allow them to kill it. So a lot of you have ideas. It's just that not having the right people, and this is another point, not having the right people around you, you won't experience growth and transition. If everyone around you is stuck at the high school stage, how are you expecting to grow that idea and business? And I'm talking whether it be spiritually or naturally. I know nothing about taxes. If I'm going to a business, would I not need to find someone to share my idea with? I'm not saying that you need to divulge everything because yes, persons will take your idea and build on it because they know that you don't have the resources. But you still need to ask the Lord to send the right set of people to you so that you can gain the information that you need to gain in order to execute what you need to execute. Natalie, um, just to add, you talk about the, the, the whole Joseph um, experience in terms of not sharing the dream. And of course, we there are times that we have to, you know, reserve what the Spirit of the Lord has said, but I think half of the time, we really give so much power to the enemy. And that's where we says, you know, we're so conscious that the enemy is going to stop our boy. Um, he's going to influence our journey at some point in time. So we are so scared in a sense. And not that he's not real and not that he cannot intercept or try to delay what God has put in our hearts. But the fact is, it's really that fear and that empowerment that we give him, right? Um, that cause us to be so reserved. And sometimes because we don't share the dreams, really, we can't have the, the people that should come and support the dream, they will not come in our lives because nobody knows what we're thinking. Knows what, nobody knows what is in our heart. And so for God to send people, we really have to start talking. We really have to open our mouth and then just begin to kind of express the vision of God prayerfully, I, I should add, right? But you're right. We can't manage this journey alone because God did not give us all the giftings, all the abilities. There are some things that we will never see. There are some things that we will never understand. And there are just some little fine. I mean, just, just look at, Junior talk about this last week, the colors in Jay's presentation that just went above my head. I didn't understand that. And he was talking about, oh, when you want to make a presentation, what are the colors um, that are that you should use and all of that. So there are people who God has really gifted to see some things that sometimes we'll never see. And that's the beauty about the body of Christ coming together and working together. Kavon, I saw your hand raised. You can go ahead. No, um, I think it's just a powerful point um, about the idea of us thinking that we cannot say what is in our hearts. Because you buy into a concept that the world gives, and and, and then we, we you know we drop a scripture and then we think it's right. And it was recently I was talking to Keisha about the idea of self-made millionaires or self-made billionaires, and it's really a very flawed and false concept because along the way you, you had to have somebody, you know, <laughs> um, and so. We have a generation now that doesn't value mentorship, don't value mentor. I can do it myself. Um, I don't need anybody. These are the, these are the, the mentality that some of the things that we believe as Christians are feeding. And so, you, you know, you have people now that shun the very help that God wants to give. And God created us as relational beings and put us in areas to pull from people but we're missing out on it and it affects what we can do and our gifts being able to come out. Because even though Joseph never tell him, brothers, don't, don't, don't bring out the preacher in me. 
<laughs> it was Potiphar played a role, the prisoners prison played a role, uh, the, the 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 prisoners played a role in him becoming get ending up where he he needed to go, and so no matter how you spin it, there are roles that are there for people to play. And, 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 and if, if I, if I just ahead. quickly add, that's... sure, go ahead. And I just add into what um, Kavan says. You know, we sing that song, Look What the Lord Has Done. <laughs> and, and it can be sung genuinely and it can be sung from a place of pride. Because the truth is, sometimes we want to achieve, we want to say, Hey, look what the Lord has done. And it's like we want to achieve without letting anybody know to kind of show up. And, and, and that's not where we should go. Understand? So it's, it's really, look what the Lord has done with the support. Of, of the pe of people around because it's not about just us shining at us. It's like sometimes us even moving from a, a humble beginning to a place of um, a high place where we come out of poverty and stuff. Sometimes, you know, pride is at every level. We have to be very careful in terms of how we express our testimony. God, the truth is, is really not so much glorifying God, but is really glorifying ourselves. And so that's why we don't want to share because. Put it this way, everybody go and get the glory when we share it, when we bring people into our dream. Mm. But this thing, again, cannot happen without the support of people. And we have to be humble enough to submit ourselves and say, come on, hey, help me with this. I don't understand this. But it, it, it will bring us at too much of a low place, come on, for us to come, <laughs> you know, and to submit ourselves because we want to ride on this high chariot to say, hey, look what the Lord has done. It's not about us. No, and I so agree with you, Chris, if I may not. Um, and and it's, it's a shift now that I believe God wants us to operate teams mm. and operate together and take yes. it off one man show that mm. played its role but never produced what it was supposed to produce. Yeah. And so God has given us community. Yes. And we have to embrace it. We are supposed to, we are better together, you know. Yeah, and so it, it, this, is the, this is the nature of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. that, we, that, that, that Paul is for the Gentiles, Peter is for the Jews, but it, it brings the whole together. And so we, we accomplish work together and, and create the whole picture. So we only see in part. But if you're a part and my part and Natalie part, and you know, we start to get a better and clearer picture. And so mm -hmm. it is a shift that has to happen. A, a lot of our businesses would have started already. A lot of the visions that we have would have gone way further if we had a better team concept and allowed God to help us build in our community um, what he has put in our hearts. Mm. Um, guys, don't be afraid to unmute your mic and speak, raise your hand. This is what we're doing. We're putting things into perspective because you see, the thing is, at the end of the day, I, I'm going to see Shalom Innovations around for a little while. I'm going to see Cleve, Cleve's um, publishing house grow. I'm going to see Smart Business Center, Clay. I'm going to see these entities around in a while. I'm not, after this year, I, it's not like, oh, you know, it won't come up. Why? Because we have to grow. We have to grow. Um, and so, not having the right people around you, you can't experience it. And so our prayers need to be what it ought to be. Lord, send the right people. You cannot do it by yourself. Don't make nobody fool you. It's not possible. I could not do any of this by myself at all. The Lord had to send the help come and I had to submit to that help even in the midst of not wanting to be out there, not wanting to be on Facebook, not wanting to, I just wanted to keep it on Zoom. Zoom is a very controlled environment. But guess what? Persons had to come and say, Natalie, get over yourself. This is bigger than you. It's not about you. I had to humble myself and listen to others. And that is just where some of us are falling short. We, 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 we want to get the glory. So when the thing that becomes big, you know, you're not call nobody name, or just your name alone. And that's a kingdom work. That is not kingdom any at all. Because everyone 
who ought to benefit from the idea should benefit from the idea. Now, another thing I want to say, failure and mistakes are a must. Anybody want to repeat that after me? Failure and mistakes are a must. You will fail because you need to learn. You don't know everything. You are even learning how to make decisions. Yes, some of us don't know how to make real hard decisions and you have to learn. So situations will come up in this whole process that will teach you how to learn to make the right decision. So you need to fail and make the bad decisions and learn from it in order to make the right one. Let's talk, are we here? We're quiet tonight. <laughs> Can I just get somebody in the chat saying I'm here? Shelly, are you here? I'm here. That's all right, Shadil. Thank you. They put up quiet tonight. And so I'm here. Good stuff, Nicardo. So failures will happen. Mistakes will happen. Stop blaming God. It's you learning to become the manager and the CEO. You don't reach there overnight. Some of us don't know how to say no. Some of us don't know how to not be the favorite. And so the situations will occur and God is in it. God is in it. God is a part of it. So we want to achieve, we want to do you have to learn to make mistakes and you have to understand that when you fail, it is not there to define you. It is not there to tell you that this is your stop. It is there for you to step back and learn. Look into yourself and learn. Tell somebody around you the situation and allow them to drape you up so you can learn. Allow them to say, listen, I saw you did stay for a long time. And this situation will always happen if you don't choose to change. Guys, change is a great concept. Excellent concept. It's the doing part we have issues with. If you have been on this journey, I can say to you that you are being reprogrammed. And don't turn up your nose at the others who you think they're not really have it together. <laughs> I'm going to ask you kindly, please don't do it. Because all of us were in that stage when we were asleep. And we thought we had it together. So whatever the Lord is bringing you through now and the revelations that you are coming into, don't look at a next person who, they're not coming into the same revelation. They're not experiencing what you're experiencing and turn up your nose at them because we were all asleep at one time. So yes, you're getting your ideas and you're coming out with your innovative things right now, but hold it. You are going to be processed for the long haul. You are going to be processed for the long haul. No one person, and this is just me sharing the different things that the Lord said I need to speak to you guys on. No one person, not even you, or me 
have all the answers. You have to learn to listen to others. Have to. It's a must. Whether it be spiritually, whether it be in life, whether it be in business, no one person have all the answers. You have to become humble enough to listen to others. I can't understand, and this is just for me, and I'm not talking to the, the, the younger persons on the platform, but you see, I'm almost 40. I know I don't look it. Right, babes? Right, babes? Babes on yes, you, babe. right? yes, yes, babes. 60 Thank as you. usual. Thank you. Cool, no? Anyways, back to <laughs> back to it. <laughs> so we have to reach a point in our lives where we stop surrounding ourselves with people we can't trust. Mm. Why is it that we still have persons? who have friends in their life and they can't trust these people. Why do you have persons in your lives that you want to hold on to the preacher's message that says, boy, I'm not sure your business, not sure what y'all got through. Cause if you have persons in your life right now that you can't pick up your phone and tell them or when in the link up, you can't, share your God idea to them because you are worried about how they're going to treat you, how they're going to view it out. Them and know your friend and them and know your company. Separate yourself from people like that. Why hold on to a relationship that means you no good? Why hold on to a relationship that stops you from fulfilling the purpose of God? At any time, guys, if you want to jump in, jump on in. Someone said on Facebook, um, the unfortunate, or oh, Nikki said on Facebook that the unfortunate thing is that even in Christendom, several persons are averse to teamwork we are averse to teamwork because there's an inner thing inside of us and some of we now go on to tell the truth that wants to get the glory so even the persons that you have hanged on to i i have another point here be careful that the people around you are not persons you are trying to prove something to so some of you hold on to the relationship because there's an inner thing inside of you that you are saying at the end of the day you have the ability to prove to that person let's talk we can talk we can really talk Mm. Somebody unmute on the mic and say, yeah, man, we're, we're, we're talk. We're talking, we're talking. We're, we're talking. talking. All right, talking then, good. all right. Let's, talk. Talk. Let's, let's talk. talk, let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah. Loving the insights. Guys, we have to grow. We have to grow. And this idea of growing alone, it's not going to happen. I couldn't reach here without my church family, without my pastor. If you look at your life and where you are at now, everyone has a role to play in your life. So how come you want to execute alone? If you have people around you and you feel like they're going to teeth your idea, what do you do around them? So the fact that you are still around people that you can't trust means that you are trying to prove something to these people. Mm. 
Your prayers need to change. We need to ask the Lord to bring the right persons in our lives, the right situations to train us so that we can go where we ought to go and we can do what we ought to do for him. I think too, Natalie, um, sometimes we have <laughs> chosen people, Zuan, but sometimes it's the type of people that we have around us. Um, it's important to have people around us that not just see things our way, but to be able to provide some level of challenge. Um, because sometimes, you know, it's really sad sometimes that our testimony seem to be um, almost the same. And, and sometimes you feel weird because if you're not testifying that God did this for you, you feel, if you're not testifying like how other people are testifying, you feel out of place. But God has created the body of Christ with that diversity because he's working um, through different eras. And so um, he's expecting basically um, us not just to follow suit with what everybody else is saying, but to step out of the box. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, we, 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 we think that we have to be doing the same old, same old, have to be saying the same old, same old, continue under the same old path. And very few people today are willing to step out of the box on an uncommon word. It's, 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 it's very funny that sometimes we pray, we seek God, but yet it seems as if we're hearing the same thing. And if we hear something different, even if God wants to challenge us, we quickly shut it down because it's not within what we are hearing. And if we continue the same way, then we are not going to bring change. So I'm just saying that we need people in our life who will challenge us. Challenge us. We need to open ourselves up. I know because of the pandemic, a lot, of, a lot more persons are, are coming out on, on, on YouTube. They're having... A lot of ministries so yes we have to be careful in terms of who we listen to but again we have to open ourselves up to learn new things and not lock ourselves um, in one way of thinking because it's really again not about us is what he's doing in his kingdom and so we need people to lift us to that to, to that place we need people to challenge our view we need people who will stir our spirit that when they finish talk to us it's like it will send us to go and pray again but we just have people around us who really just have that same kind of um, conversation and it's we talk about the same thing today, we talk about the same thing next week, we talk about the same thing next month, but there's no really value added to our conversation and so we're not really growing. And we need to start eliminate those, those kind of conversation and people because they too are not growing. And if we intend to grow in our lives and we have to kind of, you know, do some kind of pruning. So guys, I'm not saying that you're going to tell me, I don't want to talk to you because you're not growing. <laughs> yeah. um, no, that's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is... Hold on. Hold on. Getting a feedback. What I'm saying is, if there is no push and pull from you to that person, what are even what is it that you are doing in that person's life? So you see that that person is maybe not at the place. Why is it that you are not bringing that person up? Why is it that you, you're not helping that person up? Why is it okay for that person to be at that same place and then you always cuss and, you know, we, we label those people to be like, whatever. But this is somebody who is in your circle, you know, this is your circle I'm speaking about. All right, let's keep it real. I had something to do this week and my best friend said to me, I'll call it by six o'clock and you better be ready. I'm gonna tell you I'm tired. But at the end of the day, when she called, 
She said, listen, I don't really business how you feel, I don't care how you're tired, da, 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 da. We have to get this thing done. And I laid across my bed and we went through what we needed to go through. I could not do that on my own. I don't have her skill set. And I had to submit myself as annoyed as I was because I felt like I was being interrogated. I'm tired, I'm caring about her. I mean, I give bare attitude. She just ignored my attitude because at the end of the day, she knew I needed it. So she never even took me personal. You have to have people around you who understand you because there's nobody on this platform, whether it be Facebook or um, Zoom, that our personality is so whole that we're going to always be nice every day. We do have some little attributes about us. Now, let me just call it, it stinks, it's not nice, it's not cute, nothing about it don't cute, nothing about you don't cute when you go into that place. And you have to have people who are not afraid of it to say, listen to me. I see it, I acknowledge it, but where you are right now, you can't be there. You have to be, you have to, and, and, and what I'm speaking about, you know, is, is helping you to go pray. So I know that we want to go far, but in order to go far, your circle, your environment, who your ear is tuning to, who your eyes is tuning to, who you seek advice from, who you get help from makes a difference. My mentor knows when I'm hiding from him. I mean, you know when you just don't want nobody tell you about Jesus and nobody tell you, no, 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 but only, you know, but you have a time where you just don't want, you just want in your elements and in your feelings and you really depend, boy, you know, you need to do this and you need to pray. You just don't bother, you know, and that you really want here. You need people when you're afraid of that. I'm afraid of you. And running in your space, same way, and give you what you don't want because what you don't want is what you need. Yeah. And if you don't have that environment around you, I'm gonna tell you, you're not going to grow. Your ideas are going to be short lived because you won't have the fuel that you need to propel you and keep you going because life is happening. Failures are happening. Um, mistakes are happening. You are discovering yourself. You happening. All your hangups, all your insecurities, everything that you've had, to, all of this is happening. You cannot do it alone. And it's really sad that as, the, as a kingdom, we don't have a community where people can talk because life is happening for some people. Their, their marriages going through some stuff that deems to be private. And maybe who they want to reach out to, they can't reach out to because they don't feel like they have a space in which they can talk. So we, as a, we speaking to myself and everybody here, we have to become confidants for some people. To allow persons to talk so that they can get it out. And in, it's sometimes in the talking that you will discover some stuff. Someone says it's hard. Dion, I think this is you. Sometimes it's hard to find those persons start praying, start fasting, earnestly seek the Lord about it. Because if you are serious about his business, trust me, he's deliberate about yours. Is there anyone who wants to say anything before I continue? Christopher and I have been speaking. Is there anyone that wants to share? 
what this journey has been like for you, what has been happening. Facebook, I'm on, I'm seeing you on Facebook. Let's start. Nobody know I'm nothing to say. It's so quiet. Hi, Sabrina. So I'm I'm saying to us tonight that we have to become holistic about how we see things and never just see things in a matter of emotions and hype. Because there's a reality that hits us after we come out of that euphoria. And when the reality comes, you have to continue. And so I, I just want to keep it real in that sense. So guys, you're going to go through different Shandri can say it's let's listen tonight. <laughs> um, so the reality is that you're going to go through some challenges. Having a business is not easy. Um, with some of the business that I see on the platform and I'm seeing coming forward, you may even need legal counsel. Getting somebody to kind of advise you um, as to how to proceed because you may have to put together contracts and, and stuff like that, that if you send it to me, I'm going to look at it with a layman's eye. But if you send it to some the right person, they'll be able to see the ins and don'ts. And so I just really want to encourage um, everyone who is on the platform and you have an idea and you have a and you've started with the idea. As I say, it can be an idea. It can be that you've started the book. It can be that you've started writing. It can be that you've started the business. Whatever it is that the Lord has rested on your heart and you are now executing, know ye today that he has to put you in an environment to develop you for the longevity of that idea, especially if it is a God idea. And some idea has a timeline. So there's some stuff that will go on and there's some stuff that will come to an end. But at the end of the day, you will be able to see the beginning of the thing and the end of the thing and what the thing has reached. I had another point here that said, sorry, never get to. So caught up in doing that you don't go back to the author and get feedback and hear his heart. Let me repeat that. Never get so caught up in doing. So you get this idea. You have started to execute. Things are happening. And you've become so engulfed in the idea, so wrapped up in the idea that you get so caught up that you don't go back to the Lord to say, hey God, how you feel about this? What's the word we call it? Our performance appraisal. Where am I at at this? How this thing look? What is your heart on this? Because Sometimes we're so stuck on a one sentence idea when God has paragraphs and chapters to speak to us on. So when God speaks, sometimes he will give us a sentence. And then we are just working that one sentence. We don't go back to hear the other sentences, the other paragraphs and the other chapters. Because he is speaking and he continues to speak. So in your doing, don't become too busy not to go back and say, God, how you feel about this? 
What's next? Where do you want me to go? How am I going to accomplish? Is this the end of the thing? And since we're keeping it as let's talk and keeping it real, I'm just checking to see if there's anyone saying anything on the Facebook. Because I struggle with my space, I'm just liking my space, and I walk back my Sundays, and I don't know why I died, died. I had wanted to finish Let's Talk from when Cleve came on to speak about his book and about writing. That's when I was finished. But that's as far as my vision went. That's as far as my eyesight went. I couldn't see past that. But my husband, who I consider to be a very visionary person, saw way ahead of me. Now that put me in a very uncomfortable position because I did not condition my mind that this is it. We ain't going no further. You have to have persons in your life who can see even beyond what you see. And it agitated me, and he agitated me, and the idea and the concept of continuing this thing every week agitated me. Big time agitation. Because God had now put me in a situation that was dealing with the issues that I had. And then I remember Jace calling and saying, Natalie, why are you not on face, Facebook or something? And then Nicola called, and this is Shalom Innovations. And I knew, I, I, Chris, I went off on Nicola. Like I almost did have a meltdown. Like, what a girl, don't leave me alone. Why should I come out of a business, come out of a space? But guys, I'm sharing these things to let you understand that I have business ideas that I'm operating outside of this space. However, this is what the Lord is on right now. And so he has to do what he needs to do, put me in the situations he needs to put me in, in order to continue. I wouldn't have believed that in my bedroom I would have box light. Oh, and guys, look at the banner. And I would have a banner. Renee, you see my banner? So, <laughs> Ren, Ren, where are you? <laughs> so, I mean, guys, we have to reach a place that it has to become about the community. Thank you, Ren. It has to be about a community. You need a banner for your business? Epic Display is their name, Michelle. Epic Display. I was, I was introduced to them by Shara, who is another person who comes on the platform. But I, you know, talking and hearing everybody, you hear the one and two strengths. And I know Shara outside of the platform, so I know that she's a marketer. And so we know the skills. I'm stressing it because I want to see the ideas and the businesses mature and not be delayed by us. And I don't want nobody to come say the enemy and the warfare. It's a part of life. I don't know from once the enemy is here, it is a part of life for have warfare, you know, in a heaven. You on earth, with him. So me don't know which excuse we are going to give now. You need help and support so that when it becomes overwhelming and when the enemy come and him step up in your face and him thump in your face, you have someone to help dress the jaw corner and help nurture you back to, to health so that you can go again. 
The problem with most of us in kingdom is that we don't want stoppages and we don't want delay. We just want consistent flow. You are going to sometimes buck up into a hurdle that put a big brakes on it. What do you do? Stop and declare defeat or you stop, reevaluate, assess and continue. If you care about God's business and not about how you look and how you feel and who are going to laugh for you and who are going to say this and who are going to say that, you're going, you're going to walk right up into that brick wall. Stop. Assess yourself. Reevaluate. Get some help to bring you back to. And you go again. So I just want you to know that you can stop blaming God right now. Things are not always easy. Um, life happens. Life happens. I open the floor um, for anyone who would like to say, contribute, share, and then I'm going to close off with what the Lord has placed on my heart and then open the floor again. Go ahead. Anyone has anything to share, say, I open the floor for you to speak. Just unmute your mic. Why people are making up your mind? <laughs> Not sure why people are so silent tonight. Um, Good night. Know. Okay. Oh, Sabrina, go ahead. Sabrina, go ahead. Hi. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Minister Chris. Good evening, Natalie. I should apologize. Something has been written in my heart is that I was like wrestling whether or not I should say something. And the last statement you just made a while ago just kind of joked me. I said, no, no, I need to be obedient. Um, so let me just say that um, it's as you were talking about having persons around you and having the right persons. I can really attest to that of having persons around me, you particulars and other persons from Church of God of Prophecy, right? And based on my experience that have you pers persons that have been in my corner helped me and pushed me to where I'm at now. I am seeing a, a bigger picture now. I'm being pushed to a different level and I'm like, whoa, it's really, really amazing. But I can tell you this, you see, when you have an impact on people's life, don't take it for granted. And a particular sister that, she didn't, she don't come to church, I got a prophecy, nor my church, dear for my, but I know her for many years and she was struggling and I went by visit her and she was like backslidden state. I'm going to say, no, this can't happen. And all of the stuff that was in her house holding her back. I take them up, clean up the place, and fix up. And I said, somebody had to do that for me. So I know exactly where you are. And I did not judge her. I did not condemn her. I correct her in love. And she called me last night and she said, Sabrina, I really, really appreciate and love what you did the other day. But I've really kept my acts in order as it relates to the Lord because we're really in an end time. And I really appreciate what you did. And, and I said, all the glory go to God. But at the end of the day, we're here for each other. We cannot do it on our own. Because I was at a place that somebody had to come in and straighten me out properly. So I too can do for others. So I say that to encourage persons that find the right people to be. Ask the Lord. Who is my destiny helpers? Who am I supposed to be impacting? Who are the person that should be impacting my life? And you make a difference because we don't have any more time to waste. We're in the end time and we need to help each other. So each one reach one. We're not having the time to play. We're not having the time for Skylark and, and, and play games. We're, eat, we're in the end time and we have to take our spiritual work seriously and that goes to myself as well so i just want to encourage somebody out there who may be asking the question uh, who may be pondering 
who they should have in their circle. Don't go ask anybody else. Go straight to God and ask him, please. Let the Lord lead you. And he will show you who, who needs to be in your circle. Yes, that's my two cents. Thank you, Sabrina. Anyone has anything else to say, anything to add? Yes, I'd like to share. <laughs> Janine. Hi. Good night. Good night. I just want to say I really look forward to this platform because not everywhere you hear this higher level talk. You know, I think in my life, I am somebody who's always striving for the next level. And I'm also like that in a spiritual sense. So when I heard this platform, you know, where you share that there's just so much more things in God and so on, you know, it really propelled me to say, you know, there are actually other people out there with that desire to go higher. And there are actually people who have been there. So it really pushes me, you know, to just want to go further and seek God more. Because it's true when you're in an environment where people are at just a certain level and you are thinking beyond that it can, you know, dampen your spirit and so on. But I really looked forward to this platform in that sense because it was really an encouragement. So bless you and thank you for being obedient to the Spirit of God. Thanks, Janine. Anyone else? Anyone else has anything to say, add, encourage, share? Chris? Uh, good evening. Oh, Nicardo. Okay. Go ahead, Nicardo. Uh, I must say I'm learning a lot and reinforcing a lot this evening. Indeed, as you speak, spoke about team, uh, the resounding thought in mind was teamwork indeed makes the dream work. So, dream yeah. Work. Yeah, man. so thank you. And I'm, I'm here to listen. And Ricardo, you're gone. Uh, well, I'm still here. Uh, I was saying thank All you. Right, I think we'll lose you. You hear me now? Yes. Yes. Just hearing you now. All right. Wonderful. Yes. I was saying thank you. And I'm continue to take in my notes so it's a plus size <laughs> okay i think it's maybe not you guys i think it's our internet connection that's um not so hot anyone else have anything to say share add um as petrina would say you can't shanji can say as petrina would say you can't band-aid you can't put band-aid you can't put band-aid on a sore foot. It's going to get worse. Allow the nurse or the doctor to help you. The nurse and the doctor in our spiritual walk are the people who want the best for us. They see beyond the sore foot. Thanks, Shandri Khan. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Chris, you were saying something? No. Well, just wanted to say that, it, I mean, as, as you reminded us that Let's Talk started out, um, you know, because of the pandemic and stuff and giving a voice um, to, to what is happening and especially the kingdom. And we are basically having a, a second wave now. But the bigger picture is that life is changing and everything around us is going, things will not be the same, church will not be the same. And the concern, the big concern is that we are basically adjusting again and waiting for things to become normal. And can I say that things will not become normal, but we have to look for normal at another level. Mm -hmm. And so again, we really have to now be Thinking not just is like we're is like we're waiting for something to pass, rather than using this time again to really plug into God and hear what He has to say, because I think as a church we are behind, rather than being ahead of things, and we really 
Oh God, I am very concerned with <laughs> the labeling of the prophetic ministry nowadays and different, different things are happening because I don't want the prophetic to be watered down again because again, really should be looking at the things ahead and not just have one nice church service and call it a prophetic service. And all I'm saying is that the church, as a people of God, we need to be ahead of the times. We should be ahead. Natalie, you spoke earlier in the year that there are going to be a second wave. We're in the second wave now. We have to be a year, two years, three years, four years, five years ahead and be preparing. People need to start see us building that ark and saying, what is going to happen? I've never seen rain before, but yet they are seeing these crazy people called church people at Bilbao Ark. We're not, we don't have any crazy ideas because we're really not, it's like, I'm not sure the Holy Spirit that we have today is like he's just saying, hold on, hold on, I soon come, I soon come, I soon come, hang in there, hang in there. It's like, <laughs> that is the kind of Christianity, oh God, that, that, that we embrace today. We just hung, we just hanging on and just hope that Jesus will come any day now and just really whoosh and take us out of here. The spirit of dominion is nowhere near, but can I tell you all, the spirit of dominion is alive and well, and God has given us this voice to speak. We're not coming out wobbling. The spirit of Lord is going to release ideas. He's going to release ideas for the next five years. He's going to release ideas for the next 10 years. That's what this platform is all about. God is just going to open up and reveal some things to us that has been hidden for so long. He's going to reveal it to us. So get ready, people of God. Get ready for what God is about to say in this time, in this season. And the beauty of it, Christopher, is that you don't have to feel alone anymore. So when you get those crazy ideas, there's a platform, there's a group of people who, are, who, who will more than listen, who will more than support, who will more than pray. Pray yeah. through those ideas. Before, when we got those crazy ideas and those crazy experiences, we thought we were weird and different and we hid in the closet and never share and tell nobody. And you're like, you know, the enemy make you feel like you're more special than the next person who sit on the side of you. That's having the same experience. And so... This is what this platform is for. We're encouraging all those persons who think they're crazy. You are not crazy. You are normal. Yeah. You are normal. And, and there, there are times that we, we have to push God to that level. I mean, and, and I say push him because put a demand on him. Because there are times that God will share something with you. And you know you hear from him. He has scriptures to support. And you have to say, hold on, God. Um, you're sure. We, we, we are comfortable with this kingdom and dominion now, Natalie, and in my upbringing and stuff. We never hear anything about this when God talk about taking over and all of that. That was strange for me. That was stepping out by faith in terms of what God is saying and stuff. And right now, years past, I can comfortably talk about this. And still, to some people, it seems strange that, that we are taking over, that we are going to, our kingdom is going to dominate and rule. But we are going there. We are infiltrating society. You know, and I, again, I believe that, that people, politicians are going to turn up at our doors, that people are going to come and rush in to us as the people of God to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, right? We are going to be the voice that they are going to listen to. We are going to be the prophetic voice. We are going to, going to be that voice of wisdom, that voice for them to hear um, instructions and all of that. Everything else are going to fail, right? But God will never fail and our kingdom is strong and will survive every test of time, right? So we, regardless of what is happening, we and that's why God is preparing us. God is pulling us to another level. He's taking us out of this religious bondage that we have been in for so many years. We have just been so dead, so dormant. Nothing is happening. No life, no manifestation. Oh God, but God is shifting and changing things. The spirit of life that, that is upon us is going to come out of us and we are going to start new things are going to start coming out and begin to express and, 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 and God is going to do a new thing. My God, Natalie, I, I turn over to you. You can continue, Chris. <laughs> There's no restriction here. There's no restriction here. 
So whatever you hear in your spirit. Yes, guys, there's no restrictions. So if you hear anything in your spirit, unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Um, so, mm. so I'm ending Let's Talk this week by just sharing what the Spirit of the Lord has laid on my heart. And uh, I wrote it down. It's a big deal. <laughs> And it's taking a lot out of me, but I'm going to go ahead and speak what the Lord has said. This is not a time to look up, says God. It is a time to establish. I ask the Lord, establish what? The Spirit of the Lord says it's a time to establish the truth. And what we're going to start seeing is new movements mm. are going to begin. Mm. There are going to be a lot of movements happening right now because the truth is being established. The Spirit of the Lord says to tell you guys that he's establishing new guards. New fathers are being appointed, says God. And if you are here, whether it be on Facebook or on the Zoom, most of us would go to church so we know what appointment services look like. And the Spirit of the Lord is appointing new fathers in this season. The Lord says the quicker we accept our call and who we are, the quicker the pieces will be put in place to execute his plan of action. Life is happening in the midst of you executing, says God. Does a builder stop building because a storm is coming, says God? Or does he assess the damage and continue to build after the storm has passed? You are looking for an emotional God right now when I am in building mode. So you think I am insensitive, says God. I am not. I am in building mode. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. The dead church is dead. Dead church, I said, God, what's a dead church? The era of man made churches without kingdom agendas mm. has come to an end. Mm. It will not be resurrected, says God. Because upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. If you see a church, mm. and the gate of hell is prevailing against it, then that's not my church, says God. Mm. This is the season to establish. Mm. There's a shift that is happening. You're a part of that shift. It's time for us to start to hear from the Lord. He's not returning soon. For the kingdom of God has not been taught in every area. Church and religion has mm. spread the globe. But the message of the kingdom mm. has not. Mm. 
Hmm. said I should share. I'm not sure if anyone has anything to say at this time. Hallelujah. Give mm. you that opportunity before I close off. Mm. Um, powerful, powerful word, um, Natalie. Mm. Um, powerful mm. word. I, I remember some years ago, the Lord had said something to me and, and he reminded me of it last Monday that darkness in the world and just evil, the presence of evil in the world should not be celebrated as a sign that God is returning. It should be mourned as a sign of an inactive church. And as I, as I um, just listened to that word, I just remembered it because the greater, the more harsher circumstances became, it gave rise for greater power from the church. Um, we can talk about when they were in Jerusalem and they were persecuted and the church spread. And even when they were in Rome and the persecution, the church spread. And there's just so much happening in the world and, and, and the church have yet to match the challenge, to meet the challenge. And I think that's what God is calling us to. But instead, we are saying, okay, this means God is coming. So we're not even trying to shine. We're not trying to, to reach out and, and change. And, 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 and the fact that we are doing this is telling me that God is trying to, to show us um, a better way. God is provoking us. We jump off the cliff, come on. We need to jump off the cliff. Oh, Jesus. We, we need to stop worrying that if I step out, God will not manifest. Jump off the cliff. Just jump off by faith and watch God. Watch what God will do. We, are, we, we want to manifest before we even pray for nobody. So we're not laying a hand yet. We're not step out and pray for nobody yet, but we want to manifest. No man. We have to jump off that cliff. Fear has crippled us for too long. And the kingdom of God will be established. God is not perturbed by what the enemy is doing because his kingdom must be established. It's not through you, it's through somebody else. But you see this thing where we look to him say, don't look up. Now is not the time to look up. Now he's in building mode. Mm. He's in establishing mode. He's changing out the guards. Mm. But some of us need to understand, you know, we, we, we blame our leaders and we say that they are dead. We didn't expect of them. They grew up in a dead thing. Can't blame them. That's what they know. That's what they know. That's what some people know. That's all they know. And you can't blame people for what they know. And you can't blame people for their culture and, and growing up. What do you know that's going to make the difference? What is it that you have heard? What is it that has empowered you? What is it that has transformed you? What are you going to do with what you now have? Sit and wait on something dead that will not resurrect? Or breathe life into something that has the ability to? Some people are literally set in their ways. They don't know anything else. And it's very hard to want to teach them something right now. You can't blame them. You can't blame them. You can't beat them up either. Because that's their environment. That's the environment and the culture that they have had for years. Your environment and your culture is being reprogrammed right now. Your environment and your culture is mashing up right now. It scares some of you. It makes you shaky. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. It, you feel as though you're having an outer body experience like you're coming out of yourself. Well, guess what? It's time for change and change is happening whether you like it or not. Just jump off of the cliff and let the change happen. You, you mentioned some, some weeks ago, Natalie, and uh, you know, um, that 
sometimes we are concerned that the church is functioning. And that's where, the, that, that's where we operate. The church is functioning, but we don't concern that the church is not growing. Once we're functioning, once all the ministries are in place and everybody is doing a little evangelism and a little this and a little that, um, then the church is, we're okay. But in terms of growth, in terms of people going to their full potential, looking at each member and trying to push them so that they can, they can express the will and purpose of God, we're really not concerned about that. And there's a high level of control that is being happening now where we, 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 we try to control people and to allow them to bask in the presence of the Lord. Because sometimes we, we are concerned that they will not come back to us if they start hearing from God. But that's good. That's our purpose for them to be win so that they can walk in their own relationship with God. Right? But the truth is we suffer under control for, so, for, for, too, for too long. And we have just have a church that is just functioning, just going through the motion, but not as a life-giving body not producing life, not producing signs, miracles, wonders. And we're not saying that we need to run up, run up on signs and stuff, but we're not doing any extraordinary thing. We're not doing anything extraordinary. We need to move from that place. And God is creating that shifting. Right? And I share with you, the Spirit of the Lord said to me years ago, um, why look for the living among the dead? I look for, it's like many people who just, the church that we're just going through the motion, but God is taking us out of that and he's bringing us into the life of his kingdom. Anyone have anything to share? I'm about to end. Mm. And I'm going to mm. just allowing I'm allowing for you to just share if you have anything to say, if there's anything that's tugging on your heart. Now is the time. About to close off. Mm-hmm. While I'm talking, a quiet for me this week, man. I'm not sure if Kavan had finished. Um, and if there's a word, man of God, release it. There's you know, uh, um, uh, man of God, it's so funny. The Lord just showed me a name. As you mm-hmm. said, that uh, Anake Lemard Park. Um, just, uh, the Lord is pushing you into commerce, mm-hmm. into business, and He's downloading in your ideas. Um, and I think this has been a great place for you to just kind of find solace or like kindred spirits, just like, yes, yes, but you don't know where to start, you don't know how to move from point A to point B. And I just want to say what Natalie said earlier, jump off the cliff. And it is, it is, it is so easy at times for us to look at it, or that's just an opportunity to get money. No, it is the kingdom. It is not an opportunity. Everything is about, the, the kingdom is about uh, your worship. It's about your, your giftings. It's about business. It's about everything that we do. And God never intended for it to be separate. And so God is speaking to you, Anake. Um, and he has been showing you some stuff. He has been um, downloading some stuff into you. He says, your time is now to take the leap, to take the jump, and to move forward. Um, and I wanted to say as well, uh, let me ask the pastor, Chris. I wanted to say as well, <laughs> bless everyone up. Yeah, I wanted to say as well, you know, it, it is what you guys are saying that, well, Natalie said it, that the kingdom is not yet preached. Um, not only is it not yet preached, it is not yet demonstrated. And when we talk about demonstration, we normally think about like healing and mm-hmm. which, is, which is necessary. Mm-hmm. But there's a side to it. People have, don't know yet. What is God's answer for business? What is God's answer for government and politics? People don't know yet what the health sector looks like when God is the one in charge of it. People, people, people don't, they have no idea and we are the ones here. The, the, it, it is so important for us to realize that the return of Christ is 
hinged and tied to the kingdom being expressed to the world. They must, they must, God must be able to say, I showed you heaven and earth. I showed you every aspect of the kingdom. You either took it or you rejected it. And we, are, we have to play our part. And so with this church thing, go to church on Sunday, go to um, this on Wednesday and that on Friday night. It's so much bigger. Kingdom affects every area of, our, of, of life. And people are waiting to see the kingdom not just taught, or taught, sorry, but see the action of it, to see a, a nation that reflects the kingdom, to see the nations of the world look like what heaven looks like because believers stood up and said, this is how you are to do it. This is how things get done. This is how you govern a country. This is how you educate. This is what education should look like, you know, and... God have gifted so many Christians here on this call and beyond in so many areas, but we don't see it as a kingdom opportunity. We see it as a make money opportunity. And I believe God is just shifting that now um, as, as we really investigate the fullness of the kingdom. If God is coming back for a church without spot and blemish, I want you to think what that will look like. If a church is really perfect, what does that mean for the world that the church is in? What would that mean if, if, if the church has reached a level of perfection, which is what Christ is coming back for? How would a perfect church operate in the middle of a pandemic? How would a perfect church operate in, a, in the middle of economic downturn for almost every country in the world? What, what would the, a perfect church be saying and doing? And these are some of the things that we have to start asking ourselves and getting from God because the earth is looking, looking for answers and we cannot allow evil people to, to, to give answers. We have to fill the vacuum that is now created. Mm. Hallelujah. You know, we are, we are, as we talk about kingdom, it, it, it brings an atmosphere and environment. And so as we talk each week, you know, you are going to hear things. And that's what we want to encourage. You are going to see things as the Spirit of the Lord um, encourage us to, 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 to have these conversations and stuff. Um, I encourage you just to express yourself. Express yourself. Express what you're seeing. Because again, the community um, has to express. It's not just one person. This is, this is what we call normal church. We're you have somebody just get up and say some things and everybody quiet and listen. But in this community, people are going to have a voice. People are going to express. And people of God, as you're on each evening, as you listen, your hearts are going to be stirred with some things, with a vision, a dream, or just something just flash across your mind or something. It's the opportunity to share it where you can have other people kind of even test the word and not test it to criticize and bring it down but just to give some, some kind of affirmation to what the Spirit of Lord is saying to you. Because sometimes we don't have that again in the church where you can express and say, here, I hear something. Tell me about it. Let me bounce this on you. We need that because we don't hear clearly at all times. Not many people reach that place where they know the voice of God. But we need to encourage that and develop that as a culture that we need to just begin to Tune our ears, oh God. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Hallelujah. And sometimes some thoughts come in our mind. And we're not sure. You know when people not so confident, boy, something coming on my mind. That can be a, a, an idea that the Spirit of the Lord wants to develop and grow. And let me tell you something, people of God. God doesn't talk a whole lot of stuff one time. As Natalie says, she just started with this idea. Let's start. Did not see today. And let me tell you something, if you're looking for God to write that entire book, you're not going to see that happen. He's just going to give you the introduction first. Then he might just tell you what the preface is, and that's it. When you start to write, then you'll get the chapters. You'll get everything begin to unfold. Many of us are waiting to hear every single thing, and it will never happen. The Lord said to, 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 to Abraham, get the author that country or that I kindred from thy father's house into a land that I will show you. And from God spoke to him, 
He had to just move on that word and to just wait for the next word. Hallelujah. Move out on the word that you have and God will release the next word to you. Move out on what you've heard before so that you can hear greater. Hallelujah. Come on, Shanda Bakasata. I sense such a, 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 a greater level of prophetic coming out on you. Maso tubo shekete. Laba bakasata. Rabba bakasata. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say he's putting a new mantle upon you, my son. Gata bashata. Rabba kosata. Kiketolo shata. God said, get ready to speak of the things in the deep places, in the secret places. God said, I'm going to let mystery become just natural to you, said the Spirit of God. God said, the thing that has seemed so complex, as you mentioned, God said, he's going to, you mentioned just earlier about his, his wisdom upon policies, his wisdom in the health sector. God said, he's going to download it to you. God said, prepare, expand the borders of your spirit, said the Spirit of the Lord. God said to you, you, you may look slim in the spirit. God said, and I'm, I'm about to make you fat. In the realm of the spirit, God said, I'm about to fill you with an end time anointing. God said, You are gonna usher this generation into my kingdom power. God said, You're gonna experience my anointing. God said, I'm gonna you're, you're gonna experience my, my power through you, through your life. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. So let me tell you something: it's time for your spirit to stir. It's time for you to hear and move out on what you're, you can't just be hearing every week and not express what, 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 you're, what you're hearing from God. Tell me the word that God told you, just that one word. Give me that glimpse of what God is saying to you. Hallelujah. Give me that, that word that run across your mind during this conversation, because that is what the Spirit of the Lord He's saying, and he's, he wants to work. And the Bible says, he that is faithful in few, he will allow you to be a ruler over great things. There's so much that God is speaking, and he's downloading. That's why we are called, let's talk. I, hey, God. We can't be silent. We can't be silent, people of God. It's, it's talk. The network is called, let's talk. Talk, Jesus, hallelujah. It means that something is in your spirit, out of your belly, will flow rivers of living water. There's life in your spirit, and you have to release that in the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. And sometimes we have the keys for other people's breakthrough. Sometimes you just saying something. Come on, said something to a young lady here. He saw that. That's a key. Just release something in her life. Hallelujah. We have bits and pieces sometimes of people's breakthrough walking around with that we need to release. And God is expecting to open our mouth and just express that. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's talk. Open your spirit, man. Open your spirit. Open your spirit. Even open your mic right now and just begin to bless the Lord. Just open your mic and just begin to glorify God. Let's hear your mouth. Let's hear your voice. Let's hear you speak. Let's hear you say, thank you, God. Thank you for your download. Thank you for your speaking to me. Ah, you go shut up. It's a common season. It's, a, it's not a normal season, say the spirit of God. You have to tap into what I'm doing, say God. You have to tap in God. You have to tap in Alabashaka. You have to tap in Sita Bashaka. Extraordinary way. You must be giving thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We can't put in our God. We can't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Plan how you will do. You are God. Yes, yes. And you're doing it your way, God. And we just receive your ministry in this dynamic and unusual way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Outside of the norm. Yes, God. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Nikki, I see your writing, please. Let's talk. Nikki, express what the Spirit of Lord is sharing with you. Um, we'll tell you that I can't talk, Chris. But I sense that we are, we have started and we're in our growth process. I think God is asking us to be persistent in our pursuit. Um, 
we have been receiving, where Natalie went this evening of just putting stuff into perspective. So many times we get to this stage of um, having a good experience, the matter of just talking kingdom. But I also believe with all my heart that we are in that age, we have come to that graduation well, God is, God is asking us to just graduate from that baby stage. God is asking us to become the mature son, just to launch out into who he has asked us to become until we become who we're created to be, until we become who we should reflect, until we become all that he has said about us and be consistent in going through it and during the process and say, I want to see this. I must embrace this. My voice is important. My, 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 all my perspective is important. All that he has deposited in me is important. We have to just understand and embrace that process. And I really believe that we are not just on the edge of manifesting. Many of us, we are feeling stuff just come and talking, we are seeing stuff, we have keys in our hands, but we come so afraid because it's not fostered in our regular community because this is not, what I have to say is not important. We are afraid of coming into who we dream and see, into who God has ordained us to be. We mm. become so afraid because we, we are locked in our comfort zone. It's not mm. happening elsewhere. It's not happening in my church. It's not happening. I'm just waiting. So my comfort zone becomes very comfortable in not launching out in all that God wants us to do. Thanks, mm -hmm. Katrina, I believe you will type something as well. Not sure if you want to unmute your mic and just speak. Mm -hmm. Katrina? Not sure if you're hearing me. Not sure if your mic can unmute, but I see the typing. That's, I want to. Um, Go ahead, Nikki. Oh, okay. It's okay, um, Natalie. Okay, thanks, sure. Barbara. Yeah. I want to share an experience. I've shared it with you and Christopher. Um, weeks ago, I, I was so caught up with the basics of life. And sometimes you're still at that place and saying, God, I want to see you manifest. So we get so caught up um, in just want to see God manifest in our way as it relates to miracles and signs. And the Lord spoke to me and the Lord says to me, um, Nikki, why is it that you're still at basic? Why is it that you're still here when there's so much to accomplish? And I went to my bed and the Lord took me to 2035. And he basically, again? the Lord took me to the Lord took Jetson era. 2035. Yeah, 2032. Yeah, 2032. And I also yes, had a glimpse right. of 2035. Yes. Sir. And um, all that the Lord was exposing me to, he was saying, we are so back in what we should be manifesting. And if we continue at this level, when we get to 2032 and 2035, we're not going to know how to function because of everything that is, I mean, Kavan says it, the bad things that happen, we speak, we tend to, because we are not manifesting it and we are not preaching it, we tend to think that it's the Antichrist. So it becomes the Antichrist because it doesn't look like what we see. But when the Lord took me to 2032, very plain, he started off with the Jetsons. And he said to me that Jetson, I don't know, many of us um, remember the Jetsons. The Jetson um, flying. There's and George Jetson. <laughs> right. And he started off with that cartoon. And he says that cartoon was created years ago, years ago. But he, he wants us to understand what is to come. And if we don't understand the mandate that's on our life, that we really don't have any time to be caught up with the noise that's happening. Because if we don't move from where we are, if we don't graduate from the baby stage, I think Cleveland explained it clearly as it relates to a baby in Christ, maturing in Christ, being the manifested son, and they'll get to the stage of being the father and to be an apostle. If we don't graduate from this stage, we're not going to know how to function in the world of 2032. We're not going to know how to 
what to do or what is expected of us. But in this time, God is done loading in us things. There are some stuff that's going to become obsolete. I saw, I saw careers being obsolete, careers that are not necessary anymore. If we don't get on a path where we even teach our children what to choose, the right career path that they should choose, if we don't get to a place where we understand that some stuff won't mean anything, the revolution that is here, that is not just coming, if we don't understand it, we will get caught up in the religious box of thinking, oh, this is the Antichrist, and we're very quick to say, oh, God is coming back, and this is, this is how it should look like. But Chris said it right. When Noah was building the ark, he had no reference point mm. at all. He just built he had no experience of what he was doing. He just went ahead and he built. And a lot of people said a lot of stuff. A lot of people say, you're being ridiculous. You are being, um, you're, you're doing something that is not important. But the word of God also said, as in the days of Noah, that reference point that he made, I spoke to my son and I think God is talking to us. He's talking to us to, to just move out of what is ordinary. I look at this weekend, chicken was scarce. Chicken is scarce in the wholesale. It is scarce in the supermarket. Well, my end. And I knew when I went to church that God spoke to a lot of persons as it relates to farming and going into chicken. But we ignore it. And this is how God is going to be talking to us. God might just say chicken, but you're used to the office space and you're used to doing what you're comfortable with. He's mm -hmm. asking us to come to the place that when he speaks, we clearly understand what he is saying and we understand the move as to where he's taking us. So no longer we can be comfortable in an atmosphere of doing church. I said months ago that church in its current state cannot be relevant. So we have to move out of what we are used to. So I was reprimanded by the Holy Spirit, having walked through years, having him taking me years ahead. I realized that I couldn't function. All the stuff that I see, all the technology stuff, I saw robots. I saw, I saw where we should put our, our, our money as it relates to stocks. I, I saw all of this stuff in front of my eyes and I didn't know what to do. And this is him saying, Stop talking about the basic. Understand that we are far behind and we need to see what is ahead in order for us to function and for us not to come obsolete, in order for us to be at a place where life means something and where the church, not, not that, let me not say church because we are the church, where the mm -hmm. kingdom of God is manifested. So we need to hear, we need to see, we need to... We, we, we spoke, Cleveland spoke weeks ago about just, just understanding going up, understanding being in a space and not being in a space, understanding the importance of being in your bedroom and going to garden house, understanding what it means to be in your bedroom and going to Andrew's kitchen and say, hey, sir, this is what needs to happen. And this is how high we need to become. <sighs> mm. So you went on a you went on a twelve years journey, just to be clear, right? Yes, twelve and fifteen. After I left twenty thirty two, I went to twenty thirty five, and mm. in that era, it was so different. It was okay. so different from what we are trying to catch up to, and sometimes we don't think about these things because many of us thinking about um, it's end time. It's the Antichrist that is coming. It's that's what is existing now. It's that's what we need to prepare for. So we, we have not been living, but we have to now get it together as it relates to the basics of living. Mm. And just to even confirm what Nikki said, when she shared this with us, I think she shared it during the week, and it was a Saturday that Christopher and I were home, and we're reading, Chris was reading an, an article, and I'm not sure if you guys would have seen that Japan made their first car that can fly and it, it, it passed and at the bottom of the article it says the Jetsons and um, and it says something about the Jetsons and um, 20 it said that they're trying to push forward a week for 2022 but the full rollout is going to be for 2032 
And so I had to caption that because I know when Nikki called me that morning, she did well freak out. <laughs> but I, I circled it and I, I sent it to her because it's way it's beyond what, what we're thinking. And I know it's beyond what she's thinking, but what got me excited in my space as a financer is that I need to know, figure out how to buy some tech stock and stock in that company, if that company is on the stock market um, internationally, where can I get funding from? And I'm like, okay, Lord, what opportunity will I be able to capture in that space? This is how we are supposed to be thinking and talking. Um, but Nikki said something. We always put back the scripture too. And um, Anna Kay, I see your hand. And when I'm finished, I'm going to acknowledge you. Um, as in the days of Noah, I think mm -hmm. we always hold on to the negative thing, Chris, about that scripture. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. That, you know, boy, as in the days of Noah, social. We not say, hold up. As in the days of Noah, this man invented, this man built something that they've never seen. And he was speaking stuff that they've never heard before. But uh -huh. we tend to hold on to the other side of mm. things. We don't hold on to the other side for say, hold up. What was from a holistic place? What was truly happening in the days of Noah? He was hearing an uncommon word. Anna okay, you can go ahead. Good night, everyone. Um, I just want to share a word with Natalie that I heard the Lord saying just a while ago. Thank um, you. <laughs> right, pertaining to the show, I heard the Lord saying that the, it's like a magnet and that there are persons out there with snippets of magnet inside of them. They have questions, they have experiences, and there are nowhere for them to share those experiences. And so the show is what the Lord will use to pull those persons so that they can have an, a platform, an avenue for them to share. I mean, since the other day, since the lockdown, I have been, I have been saying, Lord, what is next? Sometimes I get up, I feel so out of place. I'm hearing things, I am seeing things, and, I, I, and I'm just in a little corner. And one sweet day, I met up on this ad about Let's Talk, and I joined, and it just connected something in my spirit. I've been on the show, but I haven't been saying anything. But everything that has been said, I, I've been just so in tune. And, and I just want to encourage everyone that is here to just let go, and whatever the Lord is saying, to you not to be afraid to share because what you share may be the answer to what somebody else wants to hear. And I just want to declare God's blessing upon the platform. And mm -hmm. I am just giving God thanks to how he has manifested in such a way tonight that has blessed my life. So God bless you all. Thanks, Anna Kay. Thank you. Natalie, you know, as, as Nikisha shared about 23 people now, the interpretation now would have been, wow, nice woman of God. And, and we put her in on this pedestal. It's a new era, Nikki, because you got there, I can't go there. That's the point. Because you went there and unlock it, it's real. We must jump in the people of God. God has the future in his hands. Let's dive into it. It's there. Jesus, we should be able not to tell. The, 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 <laughs> we should be writing a letter to the, the prime minister and saying, hey, this is what's going to happen in the next four or five years. These are the things that's going to happen. Align your, 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 your ministries to this vision, to, to what is going to happen. Amen, amen. So true. I mean, let me just talk go ahead, a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, you know, as, I, as I listen to these expressions, Mm -hmm. um, every now and then, there are some persons that I come across, and I used to say to them that you're ahead of your time. Mm -hmm. And more and more, I am seeing it. Even here on Let's Talk, I have listened to uh, a, a several persons who are ahead of their time. And what I've observed over the years, that persons who are ahead of their time, sometimes it, it is strenuous, sometimes it is challenging, because the people who are in the, the know, um, working with those persons who are 10, 15, 20 years ahead of their time, um, mm -hmm. they don't see it as 
the, the people who are ahead of their time see it. And sometimes um, for those persons who are ahead of their time, and but but because God is God, He always. Pastor, is it me or Pastor Aiken to chip out a while ago? Conrad, we lose you. Pastor Aiken, where are you? Pastor Atkinson, you're gone. Not only. On Pastor, 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 Pastor. Yes, Sister Brown. Yes, you went out a while ago. You were oh, chipping. I'm cutting out. Yes, 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 yes. You said that you were speaking okay. about persons being ahead of their time. All right. So there are some persons who, for years, that I have come across um, that are ahead of their time. So they would put some plans and some programs in place that is is outside of the now. And sometimes I, I have been around long enough to see 10, 15 years after um, some persons just catching up. But I, I realize that God is doing a thing um, in the now that there are so many persons, so many persons in the kingdom, in the body of Christ, who is experiencing that 5, 10, 15, 20 years ahead that can tell us. And there's a purpose and a reason for it. It is um, for us to be prepared. So nothing takes us by surprise. Um, exactly. the, 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 the pinky and the brain thing that um, you, you play as your theme are closing mm -hmm. up. What we're going to do, take over the world. And that is what, um, for us as um, kingdom people, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we're we are here for in terms of to, to, to master, to, 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 to take charge. And, you know, sometimes the crazy ideas and thinking may come, but guess what? It's, it's, it's God preparing us and, you know, the generation around us for what is to come. And it's just like... Um, back in the days, we used to watch a show called Night Rider. Night Rider was this car that the car was talking. And, and as a child, when I watch a Night Rider, I'm like, wow, you know, the car is talking. Oh, the car can drive by itself. Today is the norm. People, this car is backing up. This car is backing up. This, today is, is, is the norm. You look at cell phone. Just yesterday, one of my sister and I, or the day before we were talking, when we, in terms of linking our meeting, was the meter in Manchester, is, is right. So I wrote a letter, sent it via mail or via hand. She wrote back one and we're going to meet. Now these days, telephone. Then look at it now. Who knew that we'll have a, a platform like this called Zoom? Sometimes back when Skype came around, it's like, wow, Skype. And you watch it a couple years from now. And so as, as kingdom people, I mean, God is showing us the, the crazy thing. And you see the movies, sometimes that we watch and see some things, but that the world is, and I know you have mentioned some of it here on, on Let's Talk, that the world is, is showing and projecting some, some stuff. I mean, and then we come and we see them in, in reality. Who knew in terms of even a WhatsApp call or a video call? I mean, such technology. The scripture the Bible tells us you know, that knowledge will increase. And so with that knowledge increasing, we being kingdom people, children of God, I mean, the God of wisdom, he's going to show us. He's going to give it to us. Awesome. 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 I mean, this program has such a time as this. All right? Blessings. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. And it doesn't matter where I'm in the world. I'm not too long coming from um, an ordination service that went for hours, but if it's even a minute sometime, it could be two minutes to the closing. I always try and sign in. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, ministry going. Blessings. Your hand was up. Natalie, you're very low. Are you hearing me now? Not as loud as before. Go ahead. Orlean, hand was, Orlean your hand is up. Yes, I was just um, trying to say a, a dream I had about two weekends ago. Sure. Where, where I was... Myself and a child, I'm not sure if my son, but um, it seemed to be a smaller child. My son is 15 and another woman was with me. And it's as if we're, um, I'm in Atlanta, along, going along the, the highway. It's like, I'm not sure how we got to the, the exit to the highway. 
And then um, when you exit to the highway, you know, you have the, the lane, the exit that eventually merged to the, to the highway. And just as we got to, the, to where it merged, I, we're walking. And as we got to where it merged, somehow it seemed as if it was supposed to be a sea there. And mm -hmm. then the, the, I could see gravel along the roadway. When I was entering, I know cars were going along. But when I got there, all I saw was gravel. And then it's like we sat there expecting the water, expecting there should be water. And then we sat for a while and then I see other people start to walk towards the um, walk further out, thinking that let's go and see if the water is further down. And just as we start to walk probably about about four yards or so, I can see that water was coming back. So I guess it receded. And then it was coming and we were running, people running back to, to, and I was trying to get back to where I started in order to, to avoid all that water washing us away. And then I woke up before, before I know what was going to happen. And we got, we got almost back to the spot where we were. And then there was, um, and then I woke up from that. So I'm not sure what all of that is supposed to be. Well, Arlene, I strongly believe in dreams. I have a lot of dreamer online, mm -hmm. dreamers online. And yes. so you take nothing for granted. Mm -hmm. When you have dreams like that, that's something that you spend time in prayer about. Don't just move on because you don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. Keep on pressing and asking the Lord, Lord, what are you saying to me? What is this about? Let him move on, but you don't move on. And, don't then, move and on. then again, and then again, this weekend is like we we're in a, in the house, and somehow I was like I was visiting somewhere, and the people were trying to hurry to collect stuff, important stuff to leave, to leave where to get get somewhere else. Because I'm not sure where else that is going. Um, that one thing I can say it doesn't sound positive. Mm. Um, it sounds like something is gonna happen, and based on whatever is going to occur. It's going to have a ne negative impact on the space that you are in. But mm -hmm. finally, don't take it for granted. God is yes. speaking to you. Mm -hmm. If it means that you have to go into prayer and fasting about it, go into prayer and fasting. Let that, let that one, that little picture that you saw become sentences. And if you yes. don't press and you just move on because you think maybe you're not qualified or maybe you just don't know and you're just not going to put it, you know, put it on your head because it really don't impact your your present situation, but the, the mm -hmm. Lord can be speaking to you about where you're staying in Atlanta, that region, that na the nation that you are in. And mm -hmm. it can be through your prayers that you either stop it or that this is something that the Lord is saying is inevitable and happen and you can forewarn persons about it. But yes. don't just move on like that. Keep on praying, keep on pressing. And add some, as my pastor has said, add the fasting to the prayer yes for the revelation to come forth okay but thank you so much for sharing all right thanks i mean just just one one scripture um yes came to mind mm -hmm. is that when the lord was going to visit sodom and gomorrah he said you can't do anything without sharing with abraham what's going to happen you can yeah. read a scripture in genesis mm -hmm. and because abraham had authority yeah. He basically lays on with Abraham to share with him what his mm -hmm. plans were. You have to look at yourself as yes. a woman of authority in the era that you're at. Mm -hmm. And you can say it this way, nothing is supposed to happen in Atlanta unless you know about it. Okay. Right? So it yes. means that sometimes God is going to do something he's going to share because he's in partnership with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want this sovereign God will just do all anything and, and, and just do whatever he wants no, that's why he created us we are his children yeah. he has put us here to rule and to reign mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense he, he put us here and then just do all things but he, he's not that egotistic so what he wants to do is to bring us into his plan and sometimes yes. he wants to show you also what the enemy wants to do so that you can pray about it so first you have to accept your authority in the place that you're at. Mm -hmm. Accept it. And that will give yes. you some more confidence to go to God and say, God, explain this dream to me. 
And sometimes he wants to bring you into that place that you can have more dreams and able to interpret it. Mm -hmm. So continue push with this one, hold it, write them down, wait. Sometimes it's come by, it, it will come by a revelation from somebody. Sometimes he himself will reveal it to you. But don't yeah. stop until the thing unfolds. And then as he continues to give you more dream, it will become more plainer where you can almost be an authority in that realm, that dimension. Because dream is not something that you have a lot of people who have who can be, in a sense, master of interpretation. Yes. Well, as you're a dreamer, continue until the spirit of Lord can unfold. And you tell us what happened. Tell us what it means. All right. Amen. Thanks, Dan. Bless you. You're welcome. Thanks. So guys, we're coming to an end now. We finished. <laughs> finished tonight. You don't know me already. Thank you so much for being here. Could have been anywhere, but you are here. And so thank you so much for being on this platform. We appreciate it. I really hope that this week, you know, you get the time to reflect and think. Thank you for everyone who shared. Thank you for everything said. And I'm just going to ask Christopher to just close out as we exit tonight. Blessings, guys. Blessings. Chris, can you just close us out in prayer, please? Can I ask Nikki, jo, since she's 12 years ahead, for, us, for her to close out, please? <laughs> Nikki, Nikki's about to turn like, seriously, Chris? Let me say it for you, Nikki. Seriously? Nikki's not near her mic. Nikki? Her mic, should I dare <laughs> All right, Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to us another time. God, there is so much again that we, we need to reach at another place in you, mighty God. Hmm. A second one? Yes, sir, Brown. Go ahead, sir. Take it over. Close us off. Yes, Almighty God. Father, <laughs> we even thank you for the confirmation of your word. You are amazing, amazing, amazing. You did hint me to prepare for the closing of this prayer. God of heaven, everyone on this platform, God, we lift up to you. Give us further understanding, Almighty God, in your doing in this time and season in our lives. God, we may not understand some things fully, but because you are instructing it, because you are directing it, then God, it is well done. We put all our trust and our confidence in you, almighty God. We wait on you while we wait on you, God, like a waiter. God, we are being of service in the kingdom. And so, God, we release our hands to you, release our hearts to you, release our spirit to you, for you, oh God, to work in us and through us. God, I lift up to you, God, the, the host of this, oh God, program. You would have put, oh God, in the bronze heart and spirit, oh God, to, to have this meeting. Hallelujah. This kind of a platform, this kind of a, oh God, outlet, Jesus, for people in the kingdom to express and to get a better understanding of what you are saying to us and you have been saying to us as individual for us to realize that we're not crazy, but you, God, you are speaking to us and through us. We give you honor. We give you glory. We exalt you. We lift you and high. God, there are some persons hallelujah, listening to us even now, who are experiencing, oh God, some uh, troubled thoughts and mind and, uh, oh God, waves in their thinking and their thought process as to what to do, the next step to take, how, God, to, to, to manage, but you have uh, given them answers. You have, uh, oh God, supplied them with clarity. And so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that they will not go back, but they will progress. They will move forward in you. Oh, hallelujah, with the, the call and the purpose that you have on their lives. We honor your God and thank you for this evening. We thank you for Let's Talk. We thank you for the, 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 the host. We thank you, God, for those who have been sharing. And oh, God, as the scripture says, iron sharpened iron. We continue to sharpen each other. Bless, we pray, as we continue to give you thanks and to worship you in spirit and in truth. A thanksgiving life and a thanksgiving life in Christ's name. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Totally appreciate you coming on. Um... Yes, Nikki, we saw that your phone died. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Before, before you close, that's just encouraging people as we talk about the kingdom each week. Just encourage somebody, come on next week. Um, join in the conversation. We are part of the community. Um, just encourage somebody to come on live. Just share, share the flyer that Nat sends out each week. Just encourage somebody to come along and join the conversation. All right, guys? So guys, thank you so much for joining. I see you again next week. Let's see where we go. Bye. 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 I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> hey, Matt. Matt. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Matthew. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Matthew. Bye. Matthew, hi. That's Auntie Shandrika. Hi, Matthew. Bye. Hi, Shandrika. Yes. After church. Right. After church happening. He's my favorite. He's my one of my favorite person. <laughs> The Shangri Khan, how are you? Yes.